Hi, my name is Rafael Taubinger and this video is about getting started with C, C++, C Sharp and Java for embedded systems and apps in IR Visual State. IR Visual State is a tool for design and code generation. It is used to graphically design state machines and generate C, C++, C Sharp and Java source code for embedded systems and smartphone desktop apps. State Machines is a commonly used abstraction that is used when programming state-driven applications, where system's behavior is a function of both input and current system state, like user interfaces with complex priorities and animations in HMI systems. With IR Visual State, you can speed up time to prototype and shorten your time to market. At the same time, you ensure the code quality and smart features enable you to organize and modularize your design for efficient teamwork. Embedded systems and apps are built in large and distributed teams with different skills. State machines are often used as a common language that everybody in the team understands, from beginners to experts. IR Visual State is also an excellent tool for design tasks dealing with functional safety. The functional safety standards, for example IEC 61508, recommend state machines as one design method for meet higher SIL levels. Applications that benefit from IR Visual State solving and handling complex state machine systems include automotive applications like instrument clusters, self-driving vehicle systems, advanced power tools, vending machines, HVAC systems, tracking systems, elevators, and finally, PLCs and control systems. Some of the extended capabilities worth to mention that are also displayed on the screen are suited for low-code development in embedded systems and apps development generates very compact code and it's architecture agnostic 8, 16, 32, 64 bit, doesn't matter. The C, C++ code is Miser C compliant and Java and C Sharp is great, a great fit for apps development. It's based on UML, Unified Modeling Language. Support for hardware debugging with direct feedback in the state machine design. It's tightly integrated with IR embedded workbench but works with any compiler of course. It automatically generates documentation it includes tools for advanced validation and verification. And of course, additionally, uh, there are other plenty of key features that uh, we should mention, like cross-platform support running on Ubuntu and Windows. Uh, support for variant handling um, is also available, so you can build different variants from the same model. There's a hierarchical coder available to improve code size and speed efficiency from the generated code. You also have a diff tool for comparing changes in the state machine in XML, GUI, and even file level. Uh, it supports, of course, uh, multiple uh, users. And uh, there is also support for requirements. So the designer has the support for importing requirements from the standard rec if format, and the designer can mark items as fulfilling selectable requirements. There's also XMI import-export, so it allows you to import-export uh, state machines from standard XMI and exchange uh, these uh, models, yeah? and of course, way more. So let's move into practice so you can get a feeling on how all this comes together. So I have here IR Visual State uh, open, and uh, the way uh, it mainly works is that uh, you start with uh, your um, model. I mean, uh, there are various elements that are available. I mean, from simple states, uh, composite states, uh, various transitions or some variants like self transitions, initial state, history states, um, final state, join, fork. So that's all, of course, available. So you can set up the logic. And uh, the way it works is actually, you will be able to use low code um, development here because you create graphically um, your state machine here, and then later the idea is to mainly integrate this uh, generated code with uh, some low-level drivers that might be already being generated uh, by the various uh, silicon vendor tools that can do that. I mean, whole or BSP uh, drivers and so on. And then you just build it and have your system running pretty quickly. But uh, aside of uh, the different uh, elements here, uh, there are also some transition elements that you need to be aware. I mean, you will have events uh, that you can have, like in this case, I have some uh, timers, uh, cars timer, uh, pedestrian timers, and uh, what you are going uh, to do here, uh, it's uh, mainly uh, a crossroad, and we will control uh, the lights for the cars and then for the pedestrians. 
So that's why you know, we have these uh, different uh, elements here and even a button. I mean, if the pedestrian wants to cross, uh, he can uh, press that button uh, to um, get um, the light open to cross in a safe way. Uh, but additionally, of course, uh, there might also be uh, some action functions. I mean, uh, while uh, changing from one stage to other, uh, you might be willing to have some actions that happen uh, in this transition. And then this is, uh, of course, um, the way you do it. If you maybe have some variables like here, uh, you can even declare them here. And then once you have them all, uh, you can use them in the model. Uh, you might be wondering what happens if you have some BSP uh, that someone else generated or even a silicon vendor. Uh, how does that work? Uh, there is a simple way to just use the header file and import uh, that so you have it all available here to be used. Good, so once uh, you have your state machine in place here, uh, you might probably be willing to do some simulation or some testing. So that's uh, easily done here with sim simulate a project. I will start it here and hopefully I can fit the windows in a good way. Yes, so that's probably here in a good way. Uh, it might be a good idea to use multiple screens, of course, also. But the way it works, uh, I mean, I will start it here, send just a reset, and on the right side, you can see that um, some things are already happening. And uh, I mean, if uh, the pedestrian button is pressed, so it will, of course, uh, start to do uh, some uh, changes here. The timers, um, of course, can also be triggered. And as you can see, uh, the state machine is uh, reacting. Uh, from here, of course, you could do even a, a bit more to record a sequence and then repeat it again. So it's a good uh, test for setup. But um, even without having um, any hardware, you can just make sure that uh, your um, state machine, your model is consistent. Yeah. Good. Uh, from here, uh, the next step is uh, instead of just going ahead and generating code, and I will also show you the options that you have, you should probably uh, do some verification so you can actually verify your system. So it will mainly check if there are some unused elements maybe or ambiguity, uh, some conflicting transition, dead ends that are actually dangerous in state machines. So you can be safe that uh, your model is uh, validated here and consistent. And that's really done in an easy way here with the verificator. Yeah. Um, something that you should probably be aware is that you can also generate documentation. So how fantastic is that? So your full model gets um, uh, documented in just uh, pressing a button. And um, you have, of course, uh, different options. You can add some additional information. But if I just scroll down here pretty quickly, you will see that the model is being uh, documented here in a nice way. Uh, there is also some project signatures to make sure that the documentation is aligned with um, all your model and the generated code. Uh, but it's a very detailed um, documentation. You can, of course, have different levels, uh, all transitions, the regions uh, that are available. You can even um, change here the size of uh, the pictures and everything. And if I scroll down here to the end, uh, you should even have uh, some more specific pseudocode um, so you can see how it looks like here and what has been generating so it's let's say understandable code good uh, from here if i just move back here we should probably go to the code generation so we can move uh, forward here uh, but maybe we should explore some of the options here in the code generation and uh, of course uh, you can generate some readable code uh, that's like the switch um, um, uh, case statements that you can see. Um, but uh, it's up to you if you want to generate table-based code. But uh, the options are available here. I mean, you can, uh, by default, it's C code that is generated, but you can choose here C++, uh, C Sharp, or even Java. Uh, of course, you can only generate one or other. But you just select what you want. And from here, it's uh, mainly straightforward uh, to generate this code. And I can probably just run it quickly here. And we should probably uh, get some report here that the code is successfully being generated. Yes, so we, as you can see, uh, the code was uh, generated here. C, C++, we have a few files. Good, so this is uh, the way it works. And of course, you can see that uh, you have um, all the possible combinations here. I mean, we support UML. So it's up to you to use your creativity and best solve uh, a specific 
problem that uh, you're trying to solve. Uh, from here, uh, as I mentioned, you could use any um, uh, compiler uh, that's of course flexible and it's agnostic uh, to architecture. Uh, in this case, I'm using IR in Webit Workbench. And there are a few things that uh, make it a bit straightforward here because of the better integrations we have. So first thing is, of course, if I look inside here uh, on the options, uh, we will see that uh, there is a special plugin uh, available here and that's already selected. Uh, it's uh, the IR Visual State plugin under debugger and you will see more what happens here with some graphical animations uh, and so on. And the next step is every time you generate code, it automatically generates this IPCF, it's this project connection uh, file from IR systems. And if you add it to your project, it will populate it automatically with uh, the necessary header files and C code. And that's what I have here. So if I just force it here to build, uh, everything should be up to date and uh, we should be able to successfully build uh, this project. So it's uh, looking good. Um, and what I can tell you is that uh, when we talk about um, low code, uh, where you still have to do a bit of coding, but not much, uh, mainly what you need to do, you will need to have um, some uh, main with a while loop uh, that mainly uh, tries to check if there is any event coming in and uh, that event needs to be handled and injected into the state machine. So that's the code that you need to write here actually uh, to make it work. And then of course what I'm using here is uh, the standard peripherals provided by ST, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm mainly uh, using uh, the model from uh, IR Visual State, the state machine, and uh, running this uh, loop here. Of course, you could even use an Artos, and that would be probably uh, more optimized, so you could have uh, many state machines running in parallel, but you always have to look what um, makes it easier uh, to solve uh, your problem here. From here, what I can do, if I download uh, to the target, uh, we should enter here in debug mode. We build it successfully. Uh, the generated code with uh, the vendor specific code and my simple main uh, loop here. Uh, what you will see now is actually that we have uh, some graphical animation popping up for us here. And I'm just waiting here until we reach uh, main here. It's doing some synchronization. And as I said, we are here inside uh, the main uh, routine. And you can, of course, just uh, step uh, by step here, uh, run the application the way you want, but maybe I should just leave it uh, running with F5 Go here. And from here, uh, you can see on the right side that I'm running this application uh, on uh, my target now. Uh, and the states are uh, blinking in different ways here. So what I have is this crossroad and uh, as I mentioned, I have a button that uh, controls that. So if I press uh, the button, we should see some changes here. Uh, of course, there are some timers that need to be triggered. And then I can see here the LEDs uh, changing. And as you can see, uh, blue states, uh, red states, what's the current state. And uh, of course, um, the cars are getting red now and pedestrian has um, the way uh, or it's safe to walk. And of course, after some time, this will change uh, back. So it's a very simple crossroad solved um, in a very efficient way uh, with uh, low code uh, programming. And um, there are, of course, way uh, more features uh, that you can make use from uh, the model side. Uh, as I mentioned, importing um, different models or uh, when you set breakpoints or looking to registers in this scenario. You can even set breakpoints uh, on uh, the state uh, machine level. So it makes it very handy and powerful uh, to um, solve your problem in embedded systems. Or if you think that you can reuse the same code that has been generated here uh, for the embedded system, uh, you could maybe generate C Sharp or Java and uh, uh, solve the problem of your app that maybe is going to be used uh, in your smartphone. Great! As you can see, I should say it can help you for sure to increase efficiency with graphical modeling. You can generate C, C++, C Sharp, Java, source code for embedded systems and smartphone desktop apps. 
The solution is well suited for dealing with functional safety and also well suited for low code development in embedded systems and apps development that everybody in the team understands from beginners to experts. So make sure to start your trial now. Just access ir.com slash visual state for more details on how to get access to the validation version. The link is also being displayed on the screen now. Thank you so much for your time and hope to see you soon.